Um, let me introduce myself. My name is Derek Wizen. I'm a portrait and wedding photographer. I specialize in that and a little bit of commercial now and again. Um, much like most of you, I'm self-taught. Um, <laughs> and the journey's been fun. The hardest part of the journey was marketing. Getting clients, paying the bills, uh, getting the debt collectors off your butt. <laughs> anyway, um, so what I want to do with today's talk is I want to break it down into four parts. So we're going to start with motivation. We're going to go, but why motivation? So without motivation, everything that I'm going to tell you afterwards, you're not going to apply. Because if you don't need to, then why should you? Then from there, I'm going to go into what it is that you actually are marketing. Because everyone has this misconception that you're actually marketing photos, but we're not. I'll touch on that. Then who are you marketing to? This is also another thing that I see guys struggling with often, is um, who is your ideal client? And everyone's ideal client is rich and can afford a 10,000 rand photo shoot. Um, it's not. And then finally, I'm just going to end with 25 tips and tricks. Um, that'll also send out an email so you guys can listen more than writing. Um, so let's start. Let's start with motivation. So motivation without a compelling reason to do anything, you will become idle. So if you don't need to make more money, you're not going to apply any other stuff. If you don't have this drive to grow your brand, there's nothing. So what motivation is, is it's the compelling reason to do something. There's three reasons for motivation, really, in business, um, for entrepreneurs mostly, and I like to think that everyone is an entrepreneur. It doesn't matter how small your successful is, or how big it is. The three reasons we do this is effortless wealth. This means, um, just by show of hands, who would like to double their income? In double the time. Uh, yeah, then, <laughs> see, so what you want is effortless wealth. You want to double your income in half the time. The other reason we do this is for freedom. I don't want to be slaving away 80 hours a week. We leave the corporate world working 40 hours a week to work 80 hours a week on our own business and we're broke. It sucks. <laughs> you understand where I'm going with this. Alright, so we want freedom. We want to go on holidays. You want to take time off. You don't need to worry about all of this stuff. So this is also a key factor in motivation. And then the last thing, people want a meaningful life. I mean, you, can take all, you can't take your wealth to the grave, but you can take a legacy. So that's the last part of motivation. So just to, clear, to go over it again, it's effortless wealth, uh, the freedom, and a meaningful life. So does anyone know what separates successful entrepreneurs from the not so successful? You see that? Persistence. Fantastic. It is absolutely persistence. So what these guys do is they take this idea and they grab it with both hands and they run with it. And they take the beatings from left and right and left and right. And these guys just keep going. Obviously they change their path. So this isn't working, I'm going to go this way. And this isn't working, I'm going to go this way. And the analogy I like to think about that is, does anyone know how a torpedo works, a submarine's torpedo? Here's a fun fact. Alright, so, when a torpedo is fired, it just kind of goes in a direction. And it starts going this way, it starts going this way, and then it realizes there's nothing on the soda on So it turns. And it keeps going this way, it keeps going this way. And then, nothing on the radar. Eventually it zeroes into its target, and boom. So, if you guys gave up, think about being this torpedo. You gave up, like, I'm going home. <laughs> Your ship's dust. Alright, so... That's the difference, is these guys are so persistent all the time. You don't have to be grinding away 14 hours a day. It's really, it's unnecessary. But just stick with it. That's all you have to do. So, anyone know what the word motivation is made of? The two words that make up motivation. Motive and action. And these two key 
components of this word is everything. So if we think about motive, think about the court of law. If you get persecuted for anything, they cannot try you without motive. So your business is nothing if you have no motive. And then action, obviously, if you're not moving, you're dead. Think of it as a shark theory. Sharks have to keep swimming, keep swimming, keep swimming. And if a shark stagnates, it dies. This is the same with your business. You have to keep moving all the time. Even if you're sleeping, keep moving. So the hardest part of this whole motivation thing is finding your why. So your why is, are you looking to pay off your house? Are you looking for freedom? Are you looking to scale your business? Are you just looking to pay your bills? These, are, these need to be your why. And I'm, you need to be at a point that I can just walk up to you and go, Sir, what's your wife? You're a pensioner. Almost. You don't look day over 31. <laughs> so, that's your why. Is you want to do something in your spare time? You want to make a little extra money? There you go. So there's your why. Nothing complex about it. Some people have harder wives. They've got two kids. They want to put through university all by themselves with their photography. Completely do it. Who's me? Hmm? There you go. So there is your why. So these, this is, you need to sit there and really, I'm going to give you a couple of exercises. This is one of them. That I want you guys to spend a fair amount of time on. Is get your why. So at any point, someone comes up to you and goes, Nabby, what's your why? Putting two kids to university on your own. That's it. That's your why. It doesn't have to be 50 reasons why. You need one big why that is motivating you the whole time. So there is motivation. Pretty simple. Without it, you're going to do nothing. Okay, so, naughty badge for whoever answers this one. What is it that you guys want? Yourself. Okay, awesome. I heard that one. I'm going to see someone else put it. No more? So, what you actually are marketing is a service. And a service is nothing more than a promise. Because although people can go online and see your stuff and touch your prints, and it's not that. They cannot visualize themselves in these photos. They cannot, oh, cannot, sorry, I'm trying to English. They cannot see their big 50 inch canvas hanging on their wall. These are end products of your service. So you need to understand that you're actually marketing a service, which is ultimately invisible. So it's a little bit harder to sell. It's not like walking into Dion and going, that's a nice UHD TV. Um, it'll look great on my wall. You've already got the product, you can touch it, you can take it home. There, it's done. That's what it is. You just promise. And then the hardest thing about it is you can't put a warranty on the service. You can put a warranty on the product, but not a service. So people are terrified before they buy. So you guys need to get to them and be assured that you guys will provide the service. Um, and the hard thing is a lot of guys, and I see horror stories weekly, where guys are having problems with their clients and this has happened and this has happened because they had no guarantee in place. So contracts were bad or they weren't contracts at all and they had no guarantees and everything is now on there. And this becomes such a problem. So this is where you guys need to start your marketing. And with marketing a service, the first thing you need to market is the service itself. So we are in a point where service industry sucks. I can point at anyone and in the last month you've had a bad service somewhere petrol station, retail store, restaurant. So we are on the basis that service sucks. And although your service might be fantastic, it really might be, assume it's not. What's the worst that can happen? When you assume that your service is pretty, well, I'm gonna, I'll pass away, pretty terrible, you, what you can do is improve on it. So by the time that you've got this 
great plan in action. The time you've hit, your first customer comes to your door and they have this exceptional service. And they tell their friends, and their friends tell their friends, and their friends tell their friends, and next thing, you book for the next two years. And it's not quite as easy as that, but it sounds awesome, doesn't it? <laughs> Alright, so what we need to do with these kind of customers is we need to focus more on the relationships that we can build with people. Um, simply because we can't just rely on our products to do the talking. You need to get friendly with them, get to know them, understand what their lifestyles are, how many kids they have, what ages are the kids, are they grandparents, are they really get intimate with them, if they let you, obviously, have your space. Um, but try build great relationships. It doesn't have to be everyone, because obviously we don't like everyone. Not everyone's like them, um, like me. <laughs> um, but build these great relationships, and that's it. And then, once you've got this all in play, understand that nothing is more important than simplicity. So once you've got this system worked out, don't tangle with it. Unless your numbers start changing drastically, don't tinker with your service. Get it great, get it awesome, and keep on doing the same thing. Um, not necessarily the same, same thing the whole time, because you want to evolve or die kind of thing, but keep it simple, that's all. Um, and then I want you guys to understand that marketing is actually more a way of thinking than a way of doing. So yes, you have to place ads, you have to go out, you have to do, and do things, but you have to have this mindset of how you're going to market. Wherever you go, if you're introducing it to yourself to people, handing out business cards, these are the kind of things that you need to think about before you even leave the door. I'm going to this networking event, I'm shy, so I'm actually just going to take a couple of cards and just meet one person. So you go out, you meet one person, great. Three weeks later, this one person phones you, or his mother phones you, hi, I want to book you, great. So have these kind of things thought out before you start actually doing it. Um, so, uh, have you guys ever wondered why some photographers are booked for two years in advance, their clients understand their value, they're happy to spend, they don't care what it is, they just want the photographer to do the wedding. 40,000 rand wedding, awesome, book me now. Guys, has any of you ever wondered why they got it and you don't? It's because they've learned how to identify their ideal clients. Has anyone here sat down and done an exercise to really identify the client? I know there is someone here and I've given him the exercise and he went for three weeks <laughs> just trying to identify one person. Um, so this is where your core business comes in, is identifying this one person, obviously you're not going to only, hi, you're my client, and then no one else matters. So you're going to direct a message to this person. And whoever hears it and is interested in this message will also follow. But you want to cater your entire marketing strategy around this one person. You've got to think, you know, Alka. So Alka's not my ideal client, she's too young. Um, so everything you do, you've got to go, will Alka buy it? Will Alka like it? Will she hate it? Will Alka tell her friends about it? Will Alka be attracted or repulsed by this? These are all things you need to do. So you build all your strategies around one person. And we call this person the avatar. And no, not the movie with the big blue people. Kind of like a Facebook avatar. And you want to build your entire marketing campaign around this person. And um, it's a little bit difficult to do, so um, what I am going to do is, guys, please, afterwards, just give me your email, give me your name, give me your surname, and I'll send you a questionnaire on how to identify this client. And the more you get involved, the more you know about them, the easier it is to market them. You eventually know where they hang out, and how the kids are, and are their parents still alive? Are they wealthy? Are they in business? Where are they? So this 
whole questionnaire starts to get into the demographic of them first. So, where do they live? What do they do? Then they start to grab how do they think? Who are their friends? What do they do with their life? What are their pastimes? So, understanding the mind of them much more than the demographic of them is also just important. You, I remember years ago when I started this whole photography thing, I was like, my ideal client is rich, and she's got a MBA, and she can pay my prices, no matter what they are. So I thought, oh, Samson, everyone at Samson's rich. So I spent a whack load of money on Facebook ads and Google ads, and I was just, Samson was my area. I got nothing. So I thought, okay, cool. Let's go Google the 12 richest places in Johannesburg. It gave me 12. And I put that all in my, my criteria, and I still got nothing except that. <laughs> so it's not just about putting the ads where they are. You need to start bringing it down so much that you can identify one person out of a hundred. And that one person is all you need to talk to. Because there are others listening, but you need to tell your message on that one person. So I'd like to tell you about my ideal clients. Now, I have ideal clients for different facets. So my wedding, family portraiture, corporate portraiture, everyone's got their own avatar. And you should have a different one for every different facet that you go on. Um, this one is my family portrait avatar. Her name is Colleen. And any time I advertise, I change something, I, whatever, I think of Colleen. And um, Colleen is in her mid to late thirties. She's married. She's got two or three kids. Um, and her kids, her oldest one is married. And her youngest one might just be finishing school or going into university. So we have that gap. Then she has a career that she's really dedicated to. And she's been doing this career for years. And she's got her, she's recognized in the career and she's successful. She's a dedicated wife and mother. <laughs> and her, her husband owns his own business successfully. Um, the both of them are very active in the kids' lives. So if they have rugby games, mom and dad are there. Um, if the kids have a question events, mom and dad are there. If um, they have a chess tournament, mom and dad are there. So they're always involved in their life. Um, then I start getting into the area that they are. So, Colleen ideally in my head lives in Lone Hill, but it can be. So she's been living there for 10 to 15 years. She has lots of things. Very social butterfly, and she loves to entertain. So she brings a lot of people to her home. Her home is beautiful, immaculate. You walk in and it's just this warmth. Um, so her friends like to gather there. They do suppers and fries and everything. So Colleen is really house pride as well. So she wants to show off beautiful fancy portraits and she's got no problem spending the money on them because she values them. So she not only works on her home often, she works in her garden, she wants them to be clean, well represented. Then she's also very charitable. So I don't, I, I'm not picky about what kind of charity they do, but it, it tells me what kind of person they are. Um, then Colleen also has one dog. And she got that dog because she started getting into nets and them. And this dog is Colleen and her husband's baby. They treat it so well, they get fed better than their kids. The kids get takeaways on Sunday and back to university, you guys go. Um, so, once they got this dog and the kids moved out, they started building better relationships with their kids. And with that, they started valuing their kids. So family for this, for Colleen is very important. So I'm capitalizing on her value of family. She's now at a point in her career where she can invest heavily into portraits. 
So she's not going to flinch when you go, um, well, Colleen, that's 50,000 rand total. Thank you, we can have it. That's the kind of person Colleen is. She has, in her, well, although her home is immaculate, it's large. So she's got the place to put it. It's not that she goes, eh, I only have this little wall, so we can't really put anything here. That's not my client. Um, to Colleen, the process is just as important as the end product. So although you give her these fantastic canvases, hanging up on a wall, beautiful wall art, everything from start to finish about the process, what's important to her. Um, she doesn't need to be convinced, like I said, about the importance of family. Um, this is my one avatar. You can get more in depth. You can start figuring out where she goes to have her hair done, where her dentist is, um, does she have hobbies, does she crochet, those are the kind of things. And guys, if you have previous clients and you feel that this person is your client, ask them. Most people are happy to answer these questions for you. So if you're unsure, you come to, okay, well, what does she do for fun? You just look to your previous clients, you go, okay guys, um, do you mind helping me? I'm just doing a survey. This one is this. Most people are quite happy to give you these answers. Um, and that's all it is really about finding your ideal clients. It's that easy. Although, I do want you to dedicate at least one full day to it. Not an hour, a full day. Think about it in every aspect. Think about yourself as a person right here. And then Colleen is this person here. This is how in depth, you can touch them, you can feel them, you can pull their ears, give them a kiss, whatever works for you. That's how much I want you to be intimate with your avatar. Right, then, the final thing about marketing, guys, I see a lot of um, photographers in general being very, very pushy with the marketing. This scares people away. Marketing is more a leading game. All right, so, mm, who's gonna come with me? Watch everyone, suddenly start taking notes. Come sit here. All I did was ask. That's all I did. So, with leading, People trust you so much more. And had I told you guys, in two minutes I'm going to be putting someone out of the crowd. Yes, you guys are going to be vigorously taking notes. <laughs> Alright, so I want to do an awesome little exercise about leaving. Um, Megan, I want you to write a card. A card. Any card. I'm going to take a card. Just give me one. Write it down. Only me and you know this. Okay. Right. Never heard that one before. Alright. So you know Margo. Alright. So this is how I want you guys to lead. You are never going to push someone to an answer. Margo, you've played with a pack of cards before, sure. How many colors are in that pack of cards? Two, red and black, right? Right, I want you to pick one of those. Which one would you choose? Red, you choose red. That would be the black one. All right, so in the black, you have space, and you have clubs, right? That's great. Would you please pick space and clubs for me? Clubs, you, so you chose clubs, so we can get rid of Right? So in clubs, we've got numbers and we've got face cards. Would you please pick one? Face card. That would be the numbers, right? Right. In numbers, we have high and we have low. So low would be one to four, high would be five to nine. Would you please pick one? High or low? High. That would leave us with the low. Right. So that would leave us one, two, three, four. On those, we have odds and evens. Would you please pick odds and evens? Odds, that would leave us evens, right? So, 
Sorry. <laughs> Aren't even. No, it's fine. I got you. You're safe. I got you the whole way. So that leaves us with two or four. Would you please pick two or four? Four. So that would leave us with. Of clubs. Megan, what did you choose? That's how easy it is to lead someone. At any point, did you feel pushed? No. So even if you guys offer 52 products, you can lead them to one. And that's the one you want people to go on to. Thank you so much, Mike. So that leads 25 tricks and tips. I started with 30 and I looked there. Who's the boy? <laughs> Sorry, guys. Right, so we brought it down to 25. And guys, write if you want, but you can get the email sent to you on Tuesday because Monday I'm still recovering from the expo. So, everyone's got this unique gift. And mine is to yabber on any of them. Everyone's got their own unique gift. Use that somehow to get into a niche market. Are you awesome with knitting? Get into baby knitting. And then once you've got into that, you can get into baby photography. And you can use this as an angle the whole time. So use your unique talent to get in where others can't go. Excuse me. So the new trend that I see happening often is podcasts. So that cook, I saw you looking at my screen there. Focus here. I'll email it to you. So I'm not saying that everyone should go start doing their own podcast, but find someone in your niche. So be it family photography, be it weddings, be it corporate. These guys talk all the time and find the influencers that do podcasts. And see if you can join them. It's generally fun, it's not long, 15 minutes, in and out. But you get this great exposure. We all love exposure. Um, you get this great exposure beyond you. So that's just one way. Then, we hear this all the time. Guys, you should be networking, 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 networking. And then you end up networking with like-minded people. Which means they either will hire you for a second shooter, or if they can't make it, they'll recommend you. So that's great. But networking is so much more than that. We have, in this country, we have um, BNIs, which is the Business Networking Initiative. Awesome, they meet once a week, and it has a sign-up fee, and they have this referral system. So you have 30 people all working for you. But you need to refer them, obviously. But every week, you have a team of 30 people that cost you a few rand a day to market for you. Join these things, get involved. The, they do have free, or not free, you pay like 50 bucks and you go see it, so you don't have to commit from the start. But I would suggest guys, just search the nearest BNI near you, join them for one day. It's not for you, it's not for you. And I know networking and talking to people terrifies a lot of people. Go there and just watch. Even if you're not going to go hand out cards, just go there and watch. Then, do you guys read the news? They I know you do. Being retired and all. Guys, current events is a great icebreaker. So, even if it's something stupid like, um, what's a stupid thing I can think of? Um, well, not even stupid. Look at uh, Big Other's finance talk this week. When you get into a session with your clients or a potential client before you're having a consultation and you're just talking, it's a great icebreaker. You guys don't have to talk business from the back. Um, Talk about the finance, what do they think? Um, get them involved. Get them chatting about current events. And it's crucial to kind of keep up to date with new things. Who's died, who's um, when Justin Bieber became president, or oh, what? No, that hasn't happened yet. <laughs> Those kind of things. Um, then do you guys ever take the potentials out to lunch or dinner? Carl took me to lunch, what's it? No, I took you to lunch. I took you to lunch. Yeah, I wasn't even trying to prospect you. So, especially in the corporate world, this is how they move each other all the time. They take each other to lunch, and then this one takes that one to lunch. Do it to your clients. Everyone loves it. 
if someone had to phone me up and say, Derek, do you have some time next week? Can we go for lunch? I mean, I'm going to eat out. So use that. Um, then the next tip, anniversary cards. Do you guys ever get in contact with you after you've done your last shoot with the person? Do you even remember when you did that shoot, that shoot a year ago with the person? So keep those people's details. Send them an anniversary card. Guys, oh, it's been a year since we've shot. Would you like to? And that brings me into the next thing. Each cycle. Does anyone know what an each cycle is? Not. Okay, let me do it. So an each cycle is how often you buy something or a recurring buy. So in South Africa, generally cars is every two to three years, houses every five to ten years. These are each cycles. So if you're buying a boat every three years, three five years, you'll buy a new boat. So there is an each cycle for photography. Obviously, we don't want people to get married every two three years. They get expensive, but. After they've had that, they've had babies and family portraits and high school events and graduations and 20 years later you've got awesome customers that have been with you forever. So this is the, you need to now just decide how often you're going to contact these people and create an edge cycle. Even though they don't know that they want photos, you start telling them two months before you think the edge cycle is that they have an itch. So go guys, um, it's been a year and a half since we took the last photos. The GI is like, look, yeah, can we think about it? Cool. And two, two months later, guess what you're shooting? Um, you guys keep business cards. Everyone that's doing this, we've all got business cards. How often do you hand them out? How often? Every day. Do you put them in your bills? In your bills? Stick in your swivel. After the last time you still wish you had a birthday for the third time this year, put it in the bowl. When you are anything you can do, don't obviously don't go get your expensive cards, keep these ones aside from your expensive cards. But give them out. Eventually, if you keep giving it to the same person, a year later they've got twelve cards up on their wall and they go, Okay, I need a photographer. Yeah, I'll get this guy. So you've got to be in front of mind the whole time. So give your cards to as many people as you can. Put it in their hands, thank them very much, and be on with that. Have you guys ever thought about actually hosting an event? I'm not talking about an open day. Because these are your peers, not your potentials. But they can be your potentials if you're selling to photographers. But host an event where... Um, anyone here doing maternity or newborn? You. All right, so here's an idea for you guys. So you get these um, nurses that do, they call me, they teach you to be a, a decent parent so you don't go get really born. That's it, Queen Nasa classes, thank you so much. So you get to talk to these women and you go, I would like to host an event for all of you. Please come to my home, I will make everyone suffer and you're just gonna have a nice event where you can come talk and you don't have to be part of this prenatal class, but if you're a pregnant mommy, come in. So now you instantly get credibility because you're hosting everyone. Then everyone that finds out you're a maternity slash newborn slash birth photographer, and they go, can I please have a car? And you've done nothing but prepare dinner, and you've just got a whole lot of new potential customers. Um, a lot of guys don't use their knowledge. Sorry, we're going to clean all the water. Um, so a lot of us are really good at what we do outside of photography. So if you're a creditor's bird or a sales rep or anything that you were doing before, chances are you're really good at it. So use that to become an expert in a field that you can now create a niche for. You don't have to jump into someone else's niche. There, I mean, I see a lot of uh, flack lately from same-sex marriages. You're either for it or you're against it. But there's a market for it. So if you position yourself as a same-sex photographer, you can get all that work. 
because you become the first in the well, obviously, not obviously, probably not the first in the field. But you can position yourself as that niche so well, you don't need to look for work. Work comes to you. Then, funny, uh, it's not really a tip, but, um, no, I guess it is. What you guys need to do is, when you try something like this for the first time, most likely will not work. You guys need to practice the stuff over and over and over and over again. Eventually it becomes second nature, so you don't even have to think about it. But when you practice, it just becomes nature. Um, partnerships it doesn't have to be quite a um, thing, partner with you in my business, but professional partnerships where you go to um, let's think of an example wedding photographer. You are now looking for a partner, and you guys go to Eliba. Eliba makes these beautiful flowers and you go, guys, I'm willing to do your cataloging, but you send me every photographer request you get. You're doing a little bit of work, and they're giving it back to you. There's nothing wrong with partnership. Nurture them. Grow them strong. Take them to lunch as well. Take me to lunch for lunch as well. Um, <laughs> have you guys ever done thank you notes? Handwritten thank you notes are the most powerful thing that you could do. Two most powerful words in the English language. Thank you. Put a big smile on your face. Thank you. See? Thank you is such... I mean, it doesn't have to be this long letter. Just thanks for meeting. Um, have an awesome week. There. Um, or thank... For taking a meeting, for introducing you. Just send thank you card. And people eventually start appreciating so much. Because everything we do now is digital. Just get an SMS. Thanks. And write it, just drop it off with a reception or whatever, or drop it off in their mailbox or something personal and beautiful. I promise you, bro. Then, talking about personalizing, another thing you guys can do to potential or previous clients is send handwritten mail. And I know our postal service is pathetic at most times, um, but when you pull your mail out your mailbox, you go, Flyer, 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 bowl, bowl, flyer. Oh, hand with the note. Instantly you want to open it and see what's in there. And then you can just, thanks for a session, um, here's a coffee on me. Go strike up a deal with Muggy B. Get into printed little vouchers for one uh, cappuccino. Put it in there. Guys, please grab a coffee on me next time. So this is keeping them in, or keeping you in the mind of the project all, all the time. And um, I think that little mail thing is awesome because it's, it's so unique. Where years ago it was a lot of handwritten mail and little flyers now it's all around. Um, and then guys, when the market talks, listen, don't, over, don't talk over the market because the market tells us where it's going the whole time and it's an ebb and flow of information. And just listen to it. It'll tell you exactly what you need to hear. Then, much like I told you about the itch cycle, you guys can plant seeds, but not necessarily when um, when it's coming up to a shoot. So in a shoot, you guys um, plant seeds to get to know the people a little bit better. If you're reading the consultation, if you go do consultation, plant seeds. So you go print a big A0 canvas frame with awesome in your home. You go, okay, something to think about. So, planting seeds like that. So, when it comes time to buy it, they go, okay, you spoke about an A0. Can we get it? So, just keep planting the seeds. Do you guys want folio boxes? Um, or, let me show you these beautiful folio boxes. And they look at it, and obviously it's other people, and then you leave it there. Unless they ask you for a price, you leave it there. They can put it back down. So, you just plant it. When it comes time to have the ordering session, all these little seeds are in place. And they go, I want that, I want that, I want that, I want that, I want that. And I'm like, thank you. Ching. So, here's a really cool thing. Have you guys ever noticed big corporates? Everything that comes out of that company is branded. Shirts, pens, uh, wallets, tools, everything comes out. 
So if you guys have the budget, and that's something you can if you start by the the next year. Budget to have personalized stationery, personalized gifts, personalized anything. That if they stick the USB in the machine, it is XYZ photography. Um, if they, their son's bicycle breaks down and they pull out the little multi kit and their suppliers with XYZ photography. That is awesome to be in front of the mind. And when they see this kind of stuff, they assume that you're a market leader. So, we, I was talking about business cards a little bit earlier, and I said give them out as much as you can. But, keep different sets of business cards for different sets of people. So in a trade thing like this, we just want to get each other's numbers and no one's going to keep your stuff. You want to get your number and you're going to check it. I expect everyone else to do the same with mine. So I will not spend a lot of money on my business card. Um, then you get a little bit nicer ones that you give to a potential client that I want to walk in front of um, that could or could not be a prospect. Looks fancier, it gives a good message about your brand. Um, and then you have this beautiful one. So round the corners, uh, UV uh, matte UV, spot UVs, all those kind of things. Those are the ones that you give to people that you are convinced are your ideal clients. Um, have you guys ever thought about giving out premiums? You know what a premium is? So the free premium that your brand offers. So be it a free headshot, or a 30 steps to the perfect wedding, or um, three different new ones. Um, how to knit new one props for a photo shoot. People can log onto your website, download the stuff, obviously give their email, because now you can build the database and stuff to remind everyone monthly what you're doing, how awesome you are, and they should get money. But people download this, and then you get such a wealth of a database to work with, and they're also getting a free premium. So, a little bit of a given, a given take. Then, back when we started this, I said there's no warranty on service. Guys, I'm so confident in my products, I give a, I'll give a guarantee. I will guarantee that if you aren't happy with the shoot, I will either reshoot, refund, or, re or replace. <laughs> so if the products aren't up to scratch, I'll replace them. At my own cost. With that type of confidence I am. If the shoot didn't turn out well, now there are factors that can happen and just the, everything's against you that day. If the shoot doesn't turn out well, they, you thought, okay, fine, they're not going to get too much. You give it to them, they go, that's not really what we saw. Don't fight it. Book the next day, instantly. Um, or if they're really unhappy about it, take the product back and refund it. This, probably every now and again on forums and that I see guys, oh, the customer's unhappy, what should I do? And then everyone's like, don't refund. And other people are like, refund and reshoot and she's a bitch, ignore her. <laughs> it happens, but if you, offer this personal guarantee that you're willing to make sure they're happy. Guarantee they're going to stick with you. Then blogging. Now everyone hears your SEO blog, but who's got time for blogging? Blogging is so, to build quality content is actually time consuming. But, there are resources for it. So you get two that I can think of. You get Fiverr, which is a upwork kind of or a, a community work kind of thing where you go, guys, this is what I want. Um, who's willing to do the work? Send it out. They'll write you a 300 character blog. And you just post two pictures with it, post it up. Great. Right, it's going to cost you five dollars. Or you can go to Upwork, which is a little bit more quality. So guys write better content, a um, little bit more expensive, but you can choose who you work with. Fiverr, everyone's working on a bidding system, so the cheapest guy gets it, whatever. But Upwork, you can choose who works for you. So there's awesome for blogging. Don't do it yourself, give it up. So this is a subject, right, right. Then, 
case articles. We have um, also resources like uh, Apple Photo and Camera Stuff. These guys take reviews, they do articles. This is a great way to get your name out there. In the States we have X Stoppers and all that stuff and all these guys write this article. And it's also a way to fortify your brand. Then, has anyone really ever thought how important your auto reply and your signature is on email? Make it fun. Don't just, hi, sorry, I'm out of the office. I'll contact you when I'm done. Thanks, Derek. Um, have, sorry, we're busy out making memories. Um, there's lots. But think about how you're going to incorporate that into your brand that you have this beautiful experience, even from the first time they sent you a message. Came back to me. Then, surveys. I said to you guys, find out what your customers do. But a survey is also a sneaky way to create the edge cycle. So, two months before it's their edge cycle time, you go, guys, I'm just doing a survey. I want to improve our, uh, our service and see if there's anything that you would like to change or we can do for you. Um, this is not a sales call, blah, blah, blah. You can make your mind, it's a sales call. Um, is there anything I can do for you now? Uh, and then can I tell you about our current specials? If you have specials. Um, I'll, uh, sorry, it's not in the talk, but I want to touch on specials as well. Um, this is awesome way. So once every 13 months or so, put a survey together and phone them because if you do an email survey, statistics say that only 25% of the people respond to you. If you phone people, they're almost 100% willing to take a survey. I'm not guaranteeing it, I'm saying all this. Right, then, gift certificates, guys. Christmas is coming up. Put out gift certificates at a reduced rate. Guys, buy a gift certificate for a friend's family portrait and They'll get 10% or you'll get 10% off your next one. So they still paying, but then they're getting 10% off the next one. So they'll buy gift certificates for your service. Use gift cards, especially seasonal. So Easter, Mother's Day, Father's Day, um, Friday, uh, Friday. <laughs> um, Christmas, these things, use them to your advantage. Send out gift cards. Or just send out in your mailers that there are gift cards available and give them a benefit summary of why they should get the gift card. So you go, okay, you can buy it as a gift. So instead of going to think of uh, buying kitchen knives and mom buy a, a, a gift card, then you guys will get him to say, you're next. So you just hit two sales. With one. Then, that's my 25 trip from trick. But guys, on the subject of specials, be very very careful with specials. If you guys start running specials every month, you'll find that you are busy during special time and no other time than that. Because people start to associate your brand with a special brand. So they'll rather wait two or three weeks to get a special buys and you won't get booking. So if you are going to do specials or value add-ons or anything like that, do them strategically. No sooner than six months gone. That's it guys. Thank you very much. I hope you guys learned something. Please, um, here at the back table, just I'm going to put out the pen and paper. Please, please, please write down your email so I can get the stuff to you.